Hey guys, what's happening? So continuing where we left off, talking about the face-off between Old Man Phoenix and King Thor and their epic battle at the edge of the universe. And so for any reason, if you didn't catch that video, it'll be your first link down in the description. And if you haven't seen it, be sure to check that out because this one's gonna be referencing a lot of things from it because it explains how everything got to this point in time and the reason why King Thor and Old Man Phoenix were literally throwing hands throughout the end of time. But from there, I also wanna talk about what else is going on around them in this same time period way far off into the future after the war of realms after infinity wars after mangog pulled up on asgard and slapped the niflheim out of everybody before getting dragged into the sun of course but this place and time many of eons into the future we got to look at a number of the things that have taken place back to back and pretty much wasted the universe and so i said it before and i'll say it again for anyone who was sleeping on the mighty thor jason aaron's run after jane foster had become worthy i gotta let you know you were missing out and at this point it's not like it's too late because there's still a lot of things coming back and tying in to the more recent narratives but a lot of what we see unfold most of it is really just an addition to what we already know and so in the last video we had talked about this duel to the death between old man phoenix and King Thor, I had started off with a backstory about a battle on Earth between King Thor and Galactus pre New Midgard. And from there, we kind of follow King Thor from that moment moving forward. But this time, we're going to switch it up. This time, we're going to follow Galactus to the end of time, or more so just close to it. And with following Galactus after his battle with King Thor, as a result, we also end up following the Necrosaur. And once again, for anyone new, that's one of those things that I covered back in the Origin of Noah video, where I talked about its birth and creation and really everything we know up until the point where King Thor had used it to defeat Galactus. But after that seeming death of Galactus, King Thor had allowed Galactus to go ahead and eat Mars because hey, he wasn't doing nothing with it. And it's when we catch up with Galactus sometime later and not too long later, still eons in the future from what we would call the present. But it's here on Mars that All Black, the Necrosword, finds Galactus. And it's from there that he becomes Galactus, the Butcher of Worlds. And let me tell you something, he eats worlds with no type of etiquette whatsoever. But then again, etiquette kind of means or implies that other people are around. But even still, if nobody's around, you just gonna be nasty. But he is the Butcher of Worlds. And when planets is your favorite dish, it can get a little exciting i guess but after binge eating planet after countless planet eventually he comes across ego who he also would have eaten but that didn't work out too well for him because ego then took a bite out of him which then caused the necro sword to move to him making ego the necro world and it's really a bit of poetic justice with galactus who's been eating planets for the longest eventually being eaten by a planet and i'm sure for galactus he didn't want anybody to know about this but you're being eaten alive you don't have much of an option but also when this had happened not too far away loki was watching and at this moment he had mentioned to himself that he had seen an ending at long last and of course saying this with thor in mind but it was at this moment that he realized that he would have an easier opportunity to retrieve the necro sword from ego rather than galactus and so elsewhere still in this distant future and i'm really just kind of stitching these events together from what we got in jason aaron's thor god of thunder also the mighty thor also all the way up to more recently with the latest Thor run that kicks off your God of Thunder Reborn. But coming up right after Loki witnessing Ego eating Galactus and becoming the Necro World, we're given this delivery of now at this time when King Thor is speaking to Old Man Phoenix, or even so around the time that they were fighting, just further off in the universe. We find Ego, the Necro World, pretty much just chilling out, maxing, relaxing all, cooling all, eating some sky whales outside of the universe. But then he had been approached by a worm that was up to no good and it had started making trouble in his neighborhood <laughs> but the thing was this tiny little worm had challenged him in a battle to the death and a lot of you guys have been hitting me up even before the last video asking me who the worm what the worm was like who is it actually and to me it was pretty obvious it's Feijan Love because in the 616 universe he waits to the end of time for Smokey to give him five dollars <laughs> like could you imagine all of this just for that <laughs> nah, but it wasn't Big Worm. We'll get to who it is in just a little bit. But when this worm just shows up and challenges Ego, the Necro World, in a battle to the death, of course he just laughs it off because he's Ego, the Necro World. And he literally eats Galactuses and Sky Whales for breakfast. So what difference is a gummy worm? 
and it isn't long before he learns the age old lesson of either don't judge a book by its cover or everything that looks good ain't good for you, one of them things. But when this little worm destroys Ego, I am very certain, unless there's one more person for Loki to get the Necro Sword from, I'm very certain that this is Loki. And I say this because we know for a fact that Loki will get the Necro Sword. And this is something that we've had glimpses of a few times back in Jason Aaron's Mighty Thor. And although these times were very subtle or just brushed over, I, I looked at him like, okay, that's kind of serious. And that seriousness over intensified when Noel came around as well too in Marvel Legacy. And Noel is one person, if I may interject here, that I would love to see come back after Loki has a necro sword at the ends of time and just take it back from Loki. And then him, King Thor, and Old Man Phoenix could just sort out the rest. Now that would just be an epic finale, regardless of whoever won. But the last thing I wanna get to in this video would be another moment from the mighty Thor when the granddaughters of Thor, who had traveled back in time a number of times, by way of using time diamonds, in this particular time, they were going back looking for Thor, like the Golden Age Thor. And we've talked about in other videos how most of the history that they knew, it had either come from their grandfather, Thor Odinson, or the different books that they had collected in the Asgardian library far off in the future. And this reminds me, like at one point, I was just gonna do a Loki video about everything he's been up to. And I'll go ahead and add a bit of that spill here because in this library, I do also believe that a number of the books here have been manipulated by Loki. And that's a theory that more so connects into what's happening in Infinity Wars. So you may find that one on that playlist or in the War of Realms playlist, that one can land either way, most likely in the Infinity Wars list. But just as a quick spill from that idea, and the daughters reading from the books that Loki had changed from Omnipotent City, because the way that the time diamonds work is that you have to have a certain place in mind when you hold the diamonds, and they'll take you there. So when they were looking for Golden Age Thor, and they traveled into Marvel Legacy as we know it now, with Asgard gone, because they had just come from Asgard, and they come across their grandfather King Thor fighting against Loki, with the necro sword and this is back in jason aaron's mighty thor but when they see this and it's still being eons in the future they leave here to travel back to jane foster prior to the war of realms and i want to say it was like right after odin had brought her back from the dead <laughs> but yeah that's really my whole reasoning behind believing loki is the worm because i believe this is like that last step just before this fight between King Thor and Loki the God Butcher, or whatever he'll be called at that time, had actually happened. But even still with knowing that, it kind of also gives us a hint to the aftermath of the battle between King Thor and Old Man Phoenix, which left us on a cliffhanger, but I think it was pretty obvious with both of these guys not really being too easy to get rid of that this battle was gonna end at a stalemate. But either way, that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down below. There's still a bit we gotta talk about before we return to your regular scheduled program. And if you guys follow me on Twitter, like when I first started talking about a lot of this stuff going on and how blown my mind was, I, I just knew that I wasn't about to do all this in just one video. Because these events that are now unfolding are things that we've been waiting on for so long. And for me personally, I just really enjoyed the cohesiveness of the delivery. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments and we'll do it again in the next one. All right, later.